tonight. Hey, I see you're here. Did you get moved? Yeah. All right, buddy. Praise the Lord. Yeah, God knows another adventure for you then. Yeah. We're all on adventure. Yes. How many days you say sometimes when we get lost, so well, we're on adventure. My mother used to say that. Uh -huh. I felt lost in here. No, I don't get lost too much now going down Florida, you know. Backwards and forwards and up and down and crosswise and every which way you go, I guess. Is that just the first Christmas? But I didn't hardly leave the uh, my room all the way, that's true. When I did a couple of times. Cracker Bro was just right. Down the street. Oh, he did grains and beans. I had my beans and grains. We ate at home. We had soup and cereal. And we went and bought some groceries and things. And uh, we were cooking and everything. But uh, mainly we just rested up, you know. We see Dallin and Nina, but that's all there. Yeah, we, the only thing we did, did go to see Al and Nina we was in church with them on Wednesday night. And had a real good time with them. Praise the Lord. They're looking forward when they can be with us again. They're good folks. Saw a lot of old friends and we hadn't seen in a while. And, and it's always good. And it was, it was just almost perfect weather all week. I mean, 75, 80, in that area. Wow. And, uh, but the last day, we had to get out of a place at 11 o'clock in the morning. And it was raining when we left. And it rained, we went all the way to Georgia and rain. And uh, so we got, we got plenty of rain, but uh, just in a matter of the day. Last time was real nice, real clear. Amen. So that's, it's good to be back home now. We, we used to sing a song, look out, devil, look out. Come to you in the name of the Lord, look out, devil, look out. So amen, we rest it up. Look out, devil. Amen. Amen. Look out. Hallelujah. God is good. We love him. Praise the Lord. Let's look at him right now. Lord, sure. Lord God, it's good to serve you today. Thank you for your blessing our life. Thank you for the word of God. Hallelujah. That we know it. We're founded upon it. We're stand upon it, O oh God. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love and mercy. Hallelujah. For the opportunity just to have a church together in. Thank God for faithful people that keep the things going. Amen. We praise you for Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There was a time I just almost afraid to leave the church, you know, way back many years ago. Honestly, I never hardly given a thought. I knew everybody to be in their place. Everybody do what they do. And you get her done. And we heard all about it. And it was good. And I guess you had a really good time Sunday night. That's great. It was good that way on that whole time. And uh, we thank you for being faithful to your church. That's important. Hey, but you may come here someday. I'm not here. You never know. But, uh, amen. You'll miss me when I'm gone. But uh, we thank you for your faithfulness to the church and to the Word of God. Thank you for the love that you have for Him and that He has for you. He's a good God, children. And I can tell you that after 54 years, He's a good God. He knows how to bless. And in spite of us, He loves us. Oh, I'm so glad about that. So we're going to sing and worship Him tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.
page 93, Precious Memories. E again.
Central's never busy. emergency surgery last night and but she's doing fine she's home i brought her home about four to six and uh but uh, she was in still a lot of pain but god's good amen um, and we got her there before her appendix burst and so thank god for that yeah so i remember her prayer anybody else have a prayer request they want to make them brother mike i was your doctor today and uh I found out that my hips are rotated backwards, and I need prayer. I go back Monday to get the uh, the results of the X-ray. Amen. How's your dad doing? Um, he's he's doing better. Um, he still has that mass on the on his on the back of his right side where he uh, fractured his. Um, he still has a hole in the heart that cannot get fixed, where he is high risk. Um, so he'll continue to have strokes, and I know God. Bless you. Amen. Did he get to come home? He is home. Well, I know uh, Shane told me that he was supposed to. That's why we were moving downstairs. Yes, we moved downstairs. Uh, finally got all that moved. Um, then he came home the following uh, Wednesday afterwards, and he took home every single day. Praise God. Well, we know God is a healer of all things. Oh, yes. Absolutely a healer of all things. Amen. So we believe that uh, God's able to, to do 
exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can even think. Amen. Amen. Sister George Ann Shirley, you have friends? I have my hand Yes, did you? Yep. Remember my family, my brothers and my sisters, and, and uh, all of our children. Mm -hmm. uh, please remember Natasha. She's, uh, she got it, hopefully, I didn't open her note, but she got it today. Pray that it's her uh, medical card so she can go to the doctor. She's been in the doctor when she was too much pregnant. And uh, they haven't seen her since because we with this new Obama that she had to have a card on. She's almost seven months pregnant. So uh, she's having some uh, discomfort and stuff. I think she's a lot for their loss of faith. She's uh, 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 remember them. Uh, let's pray that they be right by the Anybody else have a prayer request they want to make now? Brother Mike. Uh, pray for my aunt. She, uh, she was to with the doctor uh, the other day, and uh, they also found that uh, she, had, she knew she had uh, scoliosis, uh, but when they did the x-rays, it is a double S, and uh, she needs a lot of prayer. Amen. 
Brother Kim. <coughs> To have a way to be For God, teach us how ways and truths. Take this house of worship tonight. Every need spoken out of the and spoken. God, we are expecting the same coming back. God, send an angel. A peace and love. Hallelujah. Up on your feet. For God, we should move through a great deal right now. But you're able to give your peace as only you can. We believe in you, Lord. We'll stand on your word. Just have your way, Lord. We'll stand and believe, O oh God. And we expect you to do what you do. We praise you for tonight. Amen. Thank you for the brother. And we're so faithful to stand by the church and the work of God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Praise you, Lord. He shall not be poor. Yeah, my body, no, my body. Hallelujah. Oh, we know we know. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Brother Mike, please pray. Lay hands and pray for him.
of bread, blood. Yeah. Do you think you're any different? Then if God will her, what's in her knee? Our faith. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Somebody talked about that, and they Sister Ashley. Um, somebody, oh, it was Miss Monica. The other night, it was good, everything. Everybody said it the other night. Uh, but it's true, very true. What's the matter with us? Well, I tell you, that lady, she decided that she knew where her help was at. And she got down and she crawled. She fought her way to Jesus. And do you know it was unlawful for her to be out? Well, it was unlawful for her to be out, but it was definitely unlawful for her to touch a man of God. Even his garment. She was not supposed to touch his garment. She could have been stuck to death for just touching his garment. But because her faith was so strong that she knew if she could only but touch the hem of his garment, she would be made whole. The same way with the centurion when he went to Jesus and he said, my daughter is sick. My daughter is dying. Just say the word. Say the word. And she'll be made out. By his faith, believing that God just spoke, made home. What's the matter with us? Where's our faith? We need to grasp the hold of that faith that was once delivered to the saints of God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He did not change. God has not changed. Good job. Come on. Where's your faith? He's right there. Somebody got revived, but it's gone. Amen. God's good. And I was just sitting there, and, and I was thinking about what Sister Monica had said Tuesday night. And I thought, yeah, where is our faith? I know I got faith. I know I do. I've seen God do many miracles. In the 54 years I've served Him, I've seen Him do many, many miracles. He's still in the miracle business. Yeah. Still in the miracle business. We've seen Him dry up cancer, absolutely dry it up. One minute that the cancer's there, the next minute is totally gone. We've seen him do it many times. We've seen him do a lot of things through the years. It's time we get back to that that the basics. It's time we get back to the point that we believe when we pray, it's done. Amen. Amen. Sister Erlene said, I am healed. I am healed. No matter what, I'm healed. Just the line size of the devil. I am healed. We have God already made a way. Absolutely. Anyway, God's good. Amen. So where is thy faith? Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Kevin, you got a song? <coughs> you know, I I, I, I want to kind of kind of admit something, but yet at the same time try to get a point across something I. Something I went through last week, and I'm so thankful that the Lord uh, seen fit that He was the one in control, and that He, uh, and that He is the one who uh, will will uh, uh, what I want to say uh, punish me. Uh, when it comes to, uh, I'm looking for something at the same time, but I'm not very good at thinking. Well, you look at it's, it's hard to it's hard to talk and but, do but things anyway, at once. Yeah, yeah, and I can't. But but anyway, you can't you can't sit around. When things, uh, 
Let me just use some examples. If if I don't if I don't care for that picture right there, it doesn't mean and I'm talking to somebody about it, it doesn't mean that everybody has to not care for that picture right there. And if I don't care for that fern over there, it doesn't mean that everybody has to not care for that fern. And if I like that vase up there, it doesn't mean that everybody has to like it either. Well, we get that way, we get that way in our churches too. And before you know it, you've got maybe a couple people says one thing, and next thing you know, you know, you think you got to believe like they believe or think like they think. And I found myself in that situation last week, and I tell you what, the Lord. Uh, I mean, it wasn't no. Come on, my son, I just, you know, I think you're making a big mistake here. It wasn't one of those. I mean, he flat told Straighten me. Straighten up. Straighten your act up. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I know that I'm knowledge. serious. He, yeah. he flat <laughs> eat me alive about my, uh, about my thoughts. <clears throat> and all this moving around and, and, and thinking uh, there's, you know, the grass is different on the other side. Or grass however is not that. Green. It yeah. ain't, yeah. No, not green yeah. I don't know how to say it, but that's that's kind of what it was. I just want to tell you that that I am founded firm as of tonight in this church right here. And this is where I know I belong. This is where I'm going to stay. And no matter what uh, you hear or what stories go around, uh, you know, the Lord has told me to uh, straighten up. And that's just exactly what I want to do. And I love the Lord tonight. I'm... I'm I do love this church, and that's I'm gonna sing this song right here in the old country church. I love the uh, I love the country too. There's a place.
He said, I fell in that trap once, I'm not going to do this again. I, I'm never going to, he, he was telling me this, I'm never going to leave this church again. I, I, I didn't fell in a trap one time before. And then two weeks later he comes and I'm going to leave the church. <laughs> well, the Bible said a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. you got to get a stable mind. you got to know which direction you're headed in. 
Nobody's here by accident. You may not realize that. God has a plan for every life. Amen. And I believe He puts us where He wants us. But wherever we go, I've never been to a place yet that it was things I didn't agree with. I don't think that's right. And that's just the way life is. Because we are people. And I'll tell you one thing, I see things a lot differently than I once did. Because he said, I will guide you into all truth. Not just in what your stupid head will tell you. He'll guide you into what truth is all about. Don't me. He'll do that. And I've always said this, there's nothing that can be worked out between two people that want to work things out. Work. You can work it out. Right. Right. It's got to be a mutual agreement. It's got a mutual thing. And I, uh, so I give you the right to do what you want to do because this, you're the one that has to answer for it. I don't have to answer for you. I have to answer for me. Now, one sense I, I do in the way that I treat you and so forth, and that's the main thing. I'll tell you this. Regardless of what you do, I'm going to love you. I made my mind up about that a long, long time ago. It's a lot easier to love somebody than it is to be mad at them all the time. But I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm glad I'm here. And uh, the time may come, we'll look up and you'll walk back in. And we'll just act like you never left. That's the way I do. I didn't have one of leave the church. <clears throat> but I haven't said, well, you know the way back. Every once in a while I'll look up and Tom Tack will be sitting in the back of the back or something. So what are you doing here today, boy? Well, I felt like I need to come home. I'm glad you came. And then maybe might beat him up a little bit. He's a little encouragement. He's going to stroke him a little bit, love him a little bit. And Lord knows I do love him very much. And he's not perfect any more than I am or you are. But we're all trying to make our way. Can you say amen? Amen. There's things I say amen to today that I can't, at one time I couldn't say amen to. Because I just didn't see it. But I see things differently now. As you get older, <coughs> the way you treat your kids, you'll change a lot if you grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. You may not always understand it, that's for sure. But you're going to love it. And when that prodigal son came to himself, and he took by his services, he took himself out into the world. Well, one day he came to himself. The Bible said he came to himself. He said, listen, even the servants have got better than I got it. There he was down swapping the hogs, and he was ready to get down and start eating with the hogs. He began to realize what a lot of mess he made out of his life. He said, I know what I'll do. I'm going back to my father. And the Bible said while he was yet afar off, the Father ran out to meet him. <laughs> Hallelujah. My son, who was lost, is found. He said, kill the fatted calf and let's have a party. My son's coming home. And the other brother became jealous. I stayed here and was faithful to you, and he went out and did what I didn't want to do. Yes, but he said he was lost. He didn't know what he's doing. You can have a party anytime you want to have a party. He was in the house of, of one that could give you the party. Thank you, Jesus. So it's good to be at peace with God today. And uh, God, some people spend half their life wandering around trying to find yourself. <clears throat> some begin to find themselves, aren't they, Lord? Steve was telling about it this week. He says, a great revival for you. That you've got a great awareness in God that you've never got before. 
Now I said somebody's going to get something this week, and you're going to be surprised not to be who it'll be. She, she's got a better understanding of God than she's ever had. She sees him as Lord. Now it's that big ogre that's going to kill her. That's right. The Lord's going to get you for this. The Lord's going to get you for that. The Lord loves you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. And you know if we got things what we deserve, we'd all be in an awful shape. But He loves us. Yes. But one of your children would call that God should be separated from I'm done with them. I'm not going to put with them anymore. Now, I've been there. Maybe you haven't. I'm sick and tired of that. I've been treating them good and they treat me like a dog. That little form calls him Diddy. <laughs> Girls just call me Diddy. Diddy. What do I mean? I want to come home. Come on home. Just come on home. What I got to do? Just come on home. <coughs> just come on back. You still got a place to stay in. That's where the Lord is. Hallelujah. Quick to forgive. I'm glad he's in a way. Men are not so. I'm going to read some scripture for you tonight. In fact, I'm going to read quite a little bit of scripture if I can. And talk to you about this, this experience that we've all got called the Holy Ghost experience. Joel. J-O-E-L. One of the minor prophets, they say. I really don't think it was so minor, but it's considered minor because he didn't have a lot of writings. But he knew something about God. Amen. Before we get in the Word, can we just raise our hands just a minute and ask God to enlighten us and open our hearts and minds to the Word. Lord, we need knowledge. We need, amen, to understand you. We need. We need to know you in a better way. We need to know the way that we're going. We thank you for Sister Lori. We pray that you'll continue to teach her and lead her in the way she should go. And others in here, they might find that same situation. Amen. I'm going to read a, a few verses here in the second chapter. And I'm in the, in the third, I don't know. I'll do quite a bit of reading. Follow with me. Some of you haven't read the Bible in the year. I don't need to shake your hand. And it's always good. He said, Go ye to trouble in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is not at I read in the first chapter here where he said, the day of the Lord come. I think, in fact, I think in every chapter here, you read such statement. The day of the Lord come. We always knew that it was coming. I couldn't believe all that's taking place in our world today. When right is wrong and wrong is right, and men have turned their ways on the back of, uh, they're back on the ways of God. And God's trying to teach them. And men want to walk after their own way. You're not the first, you won't be the last. But he's talking about the sound of an alarm. How many scripture this alarm goes forth? Amen. I pray that you'll hear it. I've never seen nothing like what we're going through right now. But, but God knows all about those things. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Now I should have one hand here. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. The great people and the strong 
there not, hath not ever been ever the like. Neither shall there be any more after it, even in the years of many generations. Do you feel what I feel? An apprehension in the air. There's different things in the air. <clears throat> A lot of our mores and, and belief is being attacked. People are laying aside their faith. Amen. Some is going to be lost. Not everybody is going to be saved. In fact, the Bible said it's not he that starts in the race. I'm glad you started. But it's he that endured to the end. I stand up here and I tell you that I've been in this 54 years. I remember my pastor used to tell me I've been in this 40 years or, or whatever. And I didn't give a whole lot of thought to it. But you go up a lot of hills, down a lot of valleys. You suffer a lot of things to stay in this faith, to come to the knowledge that I've come to today. So I look at the world, going to heaven in a handbasket. And yet, in the midst of that, God is doing a work. He's bringing people back to Him. There's two things going on here. We're being tried. Of course, Satan, he's wanting to get in on it and get his trying in. But he don't have no power over you. Just what you give him. And then he'll get your saddle here. He'll ride you. If you put saddle on, you'll ride you. He'll destroy your life. But you're going to resist that. I look around and I see all the things. I've been up and down the road. I've seen, I've had to fight things in my own family. I've never used drugs, uh, legal drugs, prescription drugs. Even then, I've never used them because I just hate to be dependent on medicine. I know there's some things they tell me because of my condition, I'll be taking it. And his whole body lays down, and that may be true. But I'm not going to go out for recreation and stick something in my mouth, or in my nose, or in my heart. I'm high enough the way it is. But some people just jump to anything. They got to try it. If it's the end thing to do, they got to try it. Thank God I never, I never was tempted to do that. And I'm not bragging. But there was something within me holding the reins. Something within me that vanishes pain. Something within me, the old song said, I cannot explain all that I know. Is there something something in me? Don't you touch that. Don't you bother that. Let the rest of the crowd do that. You don't need to do that. <clears throat> and I'm not putting anybody down. Everybody has to walk their walk to get to where they're at. I understand that. You had to go down certain roads. And I don't envy some of the roads, so you had to go down. And I've been down roads you wouldn't want to go down. Amen. We've all got to go through some things before we die to come to know the Lord. Yeah. in the way that we need to know Him. Amen. When we say that Jesus is the hope of the world, we have found that to be true. We have tried Him. We have tested Him against the world, against all of our enemies, against everything that's tried to destroy our spiritual life. Amen. And we found Him to be true. Even though we just didn't let Him go. I went through a, a divorce many years ago. Yeah. My world was turned upside down. And so I went back to what I knew, I played music. Next thing you know, I was playing with groups out of Nashville, traveling all the United States. I met a lot of people. I got to see a lot of things. I got to do a lot of things. And guess what? I found out God was in Nashville. God is not trying to bar still. 
Oh, yes. I spent hours talking to people about God on the bar stool and never drunk the booze. And God would put it right in front of me. I didn't have any choice. They tell me you're a preacher. Well, I said at this time, I'm not fulfilling that place. But I love God. I love the Lord. And I made up my mind when I went on the road being to play with you know, big musicians. I'm not going to pick up that booze. I'm not going to pick up that dope. Wherever I went, I made sure they had me a pot of coffee fixed. And I go up to myself. And just sure as I did, somebody would come around. I've heard about you. Oh, yeah. And before the night's over, I'm telling about the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, back when I was young, I used to go to church. And I don't, didn't realize how much I missed it so bad. And I come here to these places. I don't really enjoy it. It's just something to do. I said, honey, you need to go to church in the morning. And you get up early and go back to church. Jesus still loves you. That thing that's stirring you in your heart, that's Him. He never lets go of you. He never lets go. Of course, how far you go. See, I learned that about Him. So I don't judge people. I pray for them. I don't agree with them or agree with them how they're living. The old song says, don't tell my brother. Don't tell another. Just go and tell Jesus on me. And I thought that's a pretty good thing to do. Because he'll bring you back. He'll bring you back. We've seen it happen over and over and over many, many times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of this because it gets a do. Lots of different things. Verse uh, six, verse. Before their faces, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. We see people at our food pantry, and their hope is not near gone. They don't know what they're going to do. They apologize for coming to the food pantry. I've never had to go and make for food. I've always worked a job all my life. And now I don't have a job. It just kills me to come here. I said, honey, that's what this little food is all about. It's for you. We're glad that we can help you. We may not be able to help you a lot, but we'll do what we can. But see, he'll humble you down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. You know, I'll you down where you have to do things you didn't think you'd ever do. But it's all part of the plan, God, to bring you into truth so that you won't look upon others and judge them. Sometimes church people see people come through the door and they start judging people for things they do themselves or they've done in their life. It's a waste of time. Right. It doesn't help anybody. <coughs> well, you wouldn't believe what they've done. I really don't care what they've done. I know what I've done. And I'm glad that I got that taken care of. And I'm at peace with God with that. Thank you, Jesus. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. On one hand, we got this thing going on. And on the other hand, God is working right in the midst of it. It seems like all hope is gone. And everything's working against you. God is still working. Don't give up on God. He can make a way. The Bible said, where there seems to be no way. I've been there. I 
didn't see no way. But he just made a way. That's how you learn about miracles. When you make something go and go and go and go and go. And you know it wasn't enough. But God just made it enough. Daisy and I were out west one time pulling a trailer. Out in the Rocky Mountains. I was about out of gas. I was too stupid to stop her as soon as I stopped. And every time I come up over a hill, I'd look and I'd see miles and miles and miles of trees. And I'm looking for anything. And by now I know I'm on the fumes. There's no way we can make it in it. I mean, I try looking and looking, trying to straighten and straighten. Come over on this hill, and I saw a conical sign sticking up, a red and white conical sign sticking up in the, in the middle of trees. It was a, it was a campground for kids. Like they never got back to it. And when I got to it, I had a hard time to get me into the pump. But I got in there. I said, Lord, I ain't going to have this happen to me again. But I sure do thank you. Because I know we was on the fumes. Now we're talking about walking. We ain't talking about walking from here to town. We're talking about you walk for days and see trees. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. See, you got to walk your path. You can't walk my path. You got to walk your path. There's some going through some things right now that, oh God, I don't, I sure have to, have to go through that. But you know what? God, take you through it. Take you through it, and you you get your gain from it. You have things to tell me. Just as sure as the word, you have a story to tell. Amen. He said, And neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. He's talking about when you accept the will of God, it's falling on your on the sword. I'll take the blame. I'll take. You know, they can hate me if they want to, and I'm going to love them. I'm going to fall on the sword. They said, they're falling on the sword, and they shall not be wounded. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall, shall withdraw their shining. Now, this is a spiritual thing he's talking about here. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong and executed his work. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Jesus did me ready for that great day. Jesus did me ready for that great day. Jesus did me ready for that great day. Who shall really be able to stand? Amen. Therefore also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, get serious, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious, and merciful. See, that's what I found out about God. Amen. You think I care about you? Sometimes I just, I can just bust on some of you. And I can't love you half a drunk. He loves every one of you. Slow to anger and of great kindness. And repent of him of the evil. Who know if the people repent, turn and return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. So let's get serious with God. Let's look unto Him. He's the author and finisher of faith. Don't get sidetracked by looking up all these other things from the air. And all the sounds along the seashore. Don't listen to it. All the negativity. Don't listen to it. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Job, all that he went through. Even his wife said, you, you, uh, you know, like a, said, you, like a foolish man. Amen. Look what God's done for you. All you've done for him. And look what's come upon you. <laughs> oh, man, he said, you talk to the fool. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that set the rest, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and ministers of the Lord we be put between the porch and the altar. All is not fun and games. We like to have fun in the law. Sometimes we do. Sometimes it's really fun being in church. Sometimes we just get a blessing. But it's not all fun and games. It's not fun to watch people walk away from you when you know they're going to get hurt. They're going to be hurt. Hallelujah. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. Give not thine heritage reproach, and the heathen shall rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied with it. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. And I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him in the land, barren and desolate, with his face toward the east, and his hinder part toward the inmost sea. And his stink shall come up. But he said, listen, you are all going to get what's coming to him. Everything that's misused you is going to pay for that misuse. I'm going to take care of you. Trust in me. I know I'm to bless, and I will bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field, and the pastures of wilderness do spring. For the tree bear fruit, the fig tree and the vine do the yellow string. Be glad, then, you children of Israel, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you a former rain, I remember that form of rain. Never experienced anything like that in this world. Now he's got an even greater rain. Call it the latter rain. And then see when the former rain came, we didn't even have a lot of knowledge. We just experienced something. We didn't know what. We couldn't explain it to anybody. But we just knew oh, something different about this. But the latter rain is going to come with wisdom and knowledge. So he's given you the former rain moderately and will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain. So you're not only going to get the joy, but you're going to get the understanding. <coughs> Some of your eyes are just beginning to open. You begin to see things you've never seen before. Been around church the biggest part of your life and you're seeing things you never saw before. Amen. That's all part of that latter rain experience. Amen. And Jesus said, come unto me. Word of me. 
For I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. Jesus, I'm so tired. I just lay down on this couch and not go anywhere. But see, that rest, she's given that rest up for the spiritual rest that she receives in his word. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and all. And I will restore you to the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the plumber worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, that have dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. See, I say these things now. I say that I understand and I realize that all those times I thought I was forsaken, I was blessed. And now I begin to understand the blessing. And then I'm kind of getting an answer to pass on over. It's going to be a good passing. It's going to be a great thing. And not just for a good day, a few days, for a few years, but forever and ever, throughout eternity, right. we'll enjoy the goodness of God. That's His promise to us. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people should never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the, the servants, upon the handmaids of those days, I will pour out of my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord God. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered. As the Lord has sent, and in the remnant, remnant of the Lord shall call. Amen. I preach to you God's promise. And I pray that understanding will come to you in the way that it's coming to me. Amen. It makes a lot of difference if you know what you're doing. Know which way you're headed. Brother Ronnie was telling me he followed Bill Lott one time to run a junior's house. And he said, I don't know where all he went, but he covered a lot of ground. I finally decided he didn't know where he would go. And not only did he stumble on to it or what he did, but by and large they got there. But that's why the people swear God. They just go around and around and around and so Just hang in there. Be faithful. Trust the Lord. Believe the Lord. Take him in his word. Don't doubt him. If he said it, he'll do it. Then you'll have something to praise him for. Amen. And I do praise him tonight. God bless you. Let's stand. Thank you for this service. Lord, we thank you for this great word of God, which is real and lives on. Go with us to our dwelling places. Lift us above the shadows of them. Guide our steps in the ways we should go. Send someone away we might be a witness. Send us to somebody that is in need. And use us for your glory. Oh God, we're going to believe you. We're going to stand on your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shake your hand. Have your neck.